Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Mark. I'm going to start our second tutorial on WPF and Model View View Model Programming with C Sharp. Now, if you open up a project from last time, we left off with setting up the project to be able to basically have our basic outline for our project. We have set up our folders, we got everything ready, so we're going to go ahead and start coding everything up. Okay, I put our Solution Explorer window over here on the side so we can go ahead and make sure we're on the right file. So make sure we have the main window selected. And in this main window, you're going to go ahead and see the class, which is basically going to be our namespace, the name of the window, which is main window. And then you're going to go ahead and see the other stuff that Microsoft enters automatically, the presentation and the XAML. These are all just references to schemas. Then we have our title, which we can change up here. It says main window. We could change this to whatever I want, whatever we want. So let's go ahead and change that now. Let's change it to gen generate city. Oop, there a typo already. So we got generate city, and then we have the height of our window and the width of our window. And these are just the standard heights and widths. We're just, we're just going to leave alone, but we could change it if we wanted to. Or we could set min height and max height. So if we were to type min here, so the minimum height would be 350, so you wouldn't be able to shrink the window any smaller. And then if we were to write max, max height, that's the tallest our window could be. And you can do that for width also. You can do min and max width. So those just little extra tidbits for us right there alright so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is go ahead and make sure we're in our grid now everything we do in XAML has to be in a container and grid is going to be our container or our main window so inside this grid we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lay out some grid columns and some grid rows and that'll let us go ahead and put our information you know our text boxes our labels in that row without having to do margin so if you were to make the window full screen everything would move and position itself properly um, if you do margin sometimes you get side effects where you know now the margin is changed so now it's going to look totally off at least when you do grid rows and columns you have a little bit more you know finite control over everything so we're in our grid here so we're going to do the less than sign and we're going to do grid dot column definitions and let's go ahead and do the greater than sign and basically that's going to give us our cell so here's our column definition cell basically inside of our grid so basically column definitions inherits from grid so this is the parent, this is the child. It's just like XML, if you're familiar with that. You'll have child and parents. So inside this grid, we can go ahead and do column definition. Now, saying we're doing a column, we're only going to have a width. So we can go ahead and enter our width. And basically, if we're going to do five for this column. That way we have a border on this edge here. So that's why we're going to set to five and let's go ahead and close this now instead of doing the greater than and making another cell we can actually do this shorthand which will give it a cleaner look for us so basically the shorthand version is going to be backslash or forward slash and then the greater than sign so now we have right on the side over here we have like a little border and what we're going to do is well, let's go ahead and add two more column definitions in here. So do the same thing, less than. We'll do our column definition with. And now we're going to actually put an asterisk. And this will actually split up whatever's left over after we define whatever width we want. So we could have width 10, 10, 10, then have an asterisk, and it'll take the rest of the space after that but what the asterisk is really good for and this probably has a different name I just can't think of it right now but let's go ahead and do another column definition with once again the asterisk and then let's go ahead and 
close the element or the attribute and there we go now what it did is we have five over here on the edge so that's our border and then we have one column two columns so basically all I did is I made <clears throat> two columns and it split them evenly in half so that's the end of our, our grid column section now we're gonna go ahead and do our row definitions now we can put a space in here white space doesn't matter of course but it's gonna be grid now you're gonna do row definitions go ahead and now we can close it now we'll do row definition it but instead of a width we're gonna have a height and our first height that we're going to set is going to be 20. And the reason why we're doing 20 is because we're going to put a menu item inside that first row. So we're going to actually have a menu. So we can do file and about. Um, so, you know, you can have a standard menu you'd find in a program where, you know, like right here, file, edit, view, project, build, debug, team. You know, that's all built basically the same way we're going to go ahead and build it. So let's go ahead and close this. Now we're going to go ahead and do five more row definitions. We're going to have another height. And this time we're going to do 30. Let's go ahead and close that. Now what we can do is we can copy and paste this because we're going to have some even rows here. Let's go ahead and we're going to paste it three more times. So one two, three. We can paste it one more time, but we want to get rid of the 30 and put an asterisk in it because we want the rest of the space left over at the end for a control later on that we're going to do. So now that we have our columns and our rows, you can see here is our rows. The first one here at zero is actually 20. Row one is 30. Two is 30. Three is 30. Four is 30. Then five, of course, is you know our big cell. So what we can do now is we're going to go ahead and put our menu item in. So we can go ahead and put some spaces in here. Now everything's going to be contained between our grid. Because like I said, all of the controls and layout and everything, they have to go inside of a container. And grid is our container. So let's go ahead and do menu. Now we want to go ahead and basically we our menu is going to default to zero so we don't have to tell it where it's going to be because everything starts out at zero so position zero zero so it would be in column zero row zero but what we do want to do is tell it to go across all of these top cells and the way we do that is we're going to call grid dot and then we're going to go column span now what this will do is since we have three columns we'll put in three let's go ahead and do our greater than that'll give us basically our menu container and you can see by doing the column span three that it goes all the way across the top so it fills that height of 20 so whatever that height is it's going to fill it and you know I did 20 because I think it looks better and so it goes all the way across so now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and put some menu items in between here. So let's go ahead and make sure we're in between our menu here. And, you know, less than. Now we're going to do menu item. And inside that menu item we're going to have a header. And inside, let's go ahead and put file. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and close that so greater than and you could probably shorthand this too but I like to have it in a container so basically you can see file and then what's inside a file so you know you can leave everything where you can shorthand it or you can longhand it something need to be wrapped like you can't shorthand the grid because it's it needs to be an element but like buttons you can, text boxes you can. So where you see me doing it, I kind of do it as, you know, as I've seen it and as a practice, I kind of do the same style. 
So let's go ahead inside our file. We'll put another menu item. So last name menu item. Now this menu item, of course, is going to have a header. And what we're going to do is we're going to do close. So we have another way to close the program. And this is basically just to show you. So you can do this. That shorthand. And it's there. But you can't really see close pop up. So what we need to do is go ahead and get rid of that and actually close it like a menu item. Or like we would with the menu. So now what that will do is that gives us that menu. So the menu item I've noticed you need to actually have the actual closing element of the menu item. Um, you can try if you're doing something and it doesn't work go ahead and experiment and see what reactions it has. And I mean that's the best way to do it because you learn more. That's what I think anyway. Um, let's go ahead and ha add an help and about. So we have the menu item here. So let's go ahead and go past the file menu item and let's create a new one. Now what this will do is you'll see that instead of being right next to file, so let's do header, and then our header is going to be help. And let's go ahead and close that. Now you'll see instead of being inside the file menu, it's actually next to the file menu. You know, because it's not part of the file menu header tree. So you can have as many levels as you want inside of this file header menu item. So you can have a close, you can have an open, new. So just like file over here, how many ever you have inside that file menu item? header is how many things you'll have here. And you can add shortcuts and pictures, you know, images to the side. So, you know, this is all stuff you can add. But if you're looking for something like that, I'm not doing that in this tutorial. Um, we'll, we'll stick to what I'm teaching here with this city generator. So inside the help, let's go ahead and do another menu item. Let's do another header, and this one's going to be about We can close that. You can keep on the same line. You can leave the spaces. I like to clean things up. There's nothing in between it right now, so I like to clean it up. So, I mean, there we go. We have our help and our about. So, we're all done working with the menu right now. You can see we've added more to it. We have a file help. We have some control layout windows here. So, that's the beginning of our basic window. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in the labels and the buttons and the text boxes. So um, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks, guys.